Welcome back. Oral arguments now set for Tuesday in a sweeping case before the Wisconsin Supreme Court. Democrats are asking for new maps to be drawn ahead of the 2024 election, and the case couldn't be any more high profile. The lawsuit was filed immediately after Justice Janet Protasiewicz was sworn in in August, flipping control of the court from conservative to liberal. The state's high court decided to immediately take the case, and Justice Protasiewicz declined to recuse herself, despite calling the maps rigged during the campaign, while also facing threats of impeachment from Republican lawmakers if she didn't. The lawsuit is asking all 132 members of the legislature in both the Assembly and Senate to face re-election next year. Law Forward, the liberal-leaning firm focused on voting issues, filed the suit. Jeff Mandel, the board president and partner at Stafford Rosenbaum, joins us now. Jeff, good to see you. Thanks for having me. Let's start right there with this premise of the potential of every lawmaker up for re-election next year. Does, does that just create ultimate chaos, and, and is that the goal here? Well, the goal certainly isn't ultimate chaos, Matt, and I don't think that it really does create a lot of chaos. Let's be clear. If, if, if we get everything that we ask for in this lawsuit, there will be 132 lawmakers up for election in 2024. But even if we didn't, there would be 115 members of the legislature up for re-election in 2024. So really what we're talking about is 17 members of the Senate. It is not a, uh, a huge deal compared to what we usually do, and it really would not cause a significant disruption in Wisconsin. Jeff, bring me inside the courtroom uh, on Tuesday. What is the main argument and the main point you're looking to get across to justices? Well, I think the main point is that democracy demands that we have new maps because the maps that we have are not constitutional, and they're not constitutional for two different reasons. One is that most of the districts in the Assembly and the Senate are not contiguous. That means that they're not all made up of one uninterrupted chunk of, of land, uh, and that is in conflict with the words of the Constitution, which requires the districts to be contiguous. The second is that the way that these maps were drawn violates the separation of powers and uh, is, is completely inappropriate, and therefore we need, we need new maps that are, that are drawn in a way that doesn't violate that bedrock protection of our liberties. Jeff, if liberals wouldn't have flipped control of the state Supreme Court, would you have still brought this suit? I think we probably would have. The issue was not really about who's in control of the court. The question of whether the maps are contiguous or not is not a partisan question. Um, and, and, and just to be clear, while most of the voters who are part of our lawsuit are Democrats, um, this is not a lawsuit that's about partisanship. It's about restoring democracy and making sure that for the first time in 12 years, we have maps that are fair, that meet bedrock constitutional standards, and allow democracy in Wisconsin to work. As you're preparing and as you're working with attorneys this week and ahead of Tuesday, what is the biggest pushback and the back and forth from justices you are anticipating and, and preparing for? Well, obviously, there are always going to be uh, big disputes. The, the, the legislature has said that the word contiguous simply doesn't mean what everyone knows it means, and that they can label maps as politically contiguous, um, even if they uh, are not contiguous in any kind of geometric or geographical sense. We'll see what the court has to say about that. And I expect to see a lot of, uh, a lot of arguments from the other side saying that this uh, lawsuit is somehow... Un, it, it was filed too late. It was filed too early. Uh, it, it's sort of like a Goldilocks issue. They're going to they're gonna try everything they can. A ton of attention on this case this week. Jeff Mandel, board president of Law Forward. Jeff, thanks so much. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Let's bring in Luke Berg now to get the other side of this. Luke is a deputy counsel with the Wisconsin Institute for Law and Liberty. The conservative group asked to intervene in the case, and that request was granted. Luke, thanks for being here. Thanks so much for having me. Of course. I want to start right there. Why was it important for the Wisconsin Institute uh, for Law and Liberty to get involved in this case? Well, obviously, this case is going to have significant consequences if the court replaces the maps. And so we intervened on behalf of a number of voters across the state who believe that the current map is legal and should remain as is and, and that it's not appropriate for the court at this point to step in and replace the map. I want you to bring us inside the courtroom if you can for a second. What are we going to hear on a Tuesday from uh, attorneys who are, are, who are fighting this lawsuit? So there are two main merits questions before the court. Uh, first is the question of contiguity which is uh, just means that the map, uh, everybody agrees, has various small quote unquote islands, so pieces that are disconnected from the rest of the district. Those islands were uh, 
are there to track municipal boundaries. So the issue for the court is the, the Wisconsin Constitution says that districts have to be contiguous. What does that word contiguous mean? Uh, and then the second merits issue is separation of powers. And do you think that we're going to have new legislative maps before the 2024 election? Uh, we'll see what the court does. Uh, I'm not going to make predictions about about what the court's going to do in this case. Um, I know the petitioners have asked for a very aggressive uh, remedial schedule and and part of what will determine if if the court finds a violation, uh, part of what will determine the timing about how soon we we get replacement maps depends on what factual issues the court thinks needs to be resolved and what sort of process it sets for uh, submitting and selecting new maps. So we'll just have to see what the court does with it. And what do you think are the biggest questions or even the potential back and forth that we're gonna hear Tuesday from the justices uh, uh, in this lawsuit? Obviously, we're gonna have a lot of back and forth about the merits of the two claim. What does the word contiguous mean? Uh, can we even hear these arguments? But, but I think a lot of the discussion is gonna focus on remedy. Uh, in part because there is a very simple remedy to the contiguity problem and the separation of powers claim, uh, which is to simply absorb the existing islands into their surrounding districts. So there's something between two and 300 islands in the current map. Everybody agrees on those numbers roughly. Uh, but a third of those islands have zero people in them. Another third have less than 10 and another third have less than 100. And there's only a handful that have uh, uh, more than 100 people in them. So if you were simply to take the islands and put them in the, the districts that surround them, it would eliminate the contiguity problem and you wouldn't have any population problems in the existing map. Obviously, the petitioners don't want that because they want to redraw the entire map. Uh, but that that's going to be, a, I think, a focus of the arguments on Tuesday is, does that solution fix the problem? And if not, why not? A lot to watch for as those arguments get underway on Tuesday. Luke Berg, uh, Deputy Counsel with the Wisconsin Institute for Law and Liberty, thanks so much for your time. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. Up next, the new Trump book. ABC News Chief Washington Correspondent Jonathan Carl with the new Wisconsin Revelations. Standing by next.